Hello everybody, I am not dead yet and today I want to talk to you about Bill C-11, the very scary bill that is trying to be passed through the Canadian government. Now, I'm sure anybody who's uh, been on YouTube the past couple of days and watches any kind of Canadian YouTuber has probably already heard about this bill, but essentially what it is is an attempt by the Canadian government to control information. The Canadian government wants to push um, content that is... Canadian uh, in an attempt to be more patriotic and put forward and emphasize Canadian creators in our country. However, this would actually be a massive detriment to the vast majority of Canadian creators uh, on YouTube. And the interesting thing about this is the fact that they are actually trying to control YouTube. The vast majority of bills and, and, and laws uh, regarding pretty much any kind of media control usually tend to leave something like YouTube alone. However, with this new bill, they would be able to suppress or even just straight up hide content that isn't Canadian enough, which would probably force Canadian content creators to pander to the government's definition of what would be Canadian enough. And uh, at that point, too, from what I understand, uh, it would really mess up with the algorithms for Canadian content creators worldwide because you can't really pander to pretty much any other country aside from Canada. So it's like, let's say you're, you you want to talk about, let's say I want to talk about boxing and I talk about Tyson Fury. Well, the fact that he's not Canadian could def, like certainly hamper my ability to speak on pretty much anything. Or there was a South African boxer who recently died. And uh, if I wanted to talk about that on my channel and how that would relate to me and how that relates to fighting in general, it would make it a lot more difficult for the viewer to actually go out there and reach people and again for someone as small as me it's kind of like okay well that sucks but for people who are massive channels they run the risk of losing their livelihood but that's not even really what I'm concerned about personally because to me the most scary thing about this is the attempt at grab of power from the Canadian government because uh, let's be real the Canadian government for anybody who does not actually know already has a lot of power over the media there is quotas I think it's 35% um, over the broadcast uh, services here in Canada there needs to be a certain amount of Canadian made and Canadian produced media shown to people in their homes, whether it be on TV or over the radio. Uh, the vast majority of Canadian cartoons actually are really pushed for that, and they really push to have Canadian-made media cartoons and shows uh, propagated throughout this country, as opposed to just kind of letting whatever people want to watch dictate, you know, the, the time slots and stuff like that. And even to a certain extent, I don't mind that too, too much. Because it actually did give me some great cartoons. For anybody who knows uh, Being Ian, any of you Canadians out there, or uh, Jacob Tutu, which was also a really, really good uh, Canadian show, at least in my opinion. I, I remember them, like, I haven't seen them in a long time. But from what I remember from when I was a kid, I really did enjoy those cartoons. However, I think one of the reasons why people want to do this, especially when it comes to media, is the fact that because of things like streaming services and YouTube, it's becoming a lot harder for them to have that stranglehold on the media. Even in um, on the radio here in Canada, there is a specific quota that the radio hosts and radio any any radio station has to play a specific Canadian cartoon. So there are Canadian cartoons, Canadian songs. So you could think that an artist is super popular. Uh, however, it could just be the fact that that artist is Canadian, and so it's super popular in Canada because their songs are being pushed more than, say, an American artist, right? Uh, people that come to mind for that would be something like Nickelback, Brian Adams, and uh, I think The Hip, I think The Tragically Hip are a Canadian band that are pretty popular in Canada, but still relatively obscure, not superstardom. Again, don't crucify me in the comments, I might be mixing up my bands, I... No, I know mostly bands by songs and actual legacy. Don't, don't, don't shoot me, please. But uh, that being said, the media has this massive stranglehold on what people are allowed to play, and it's starting to loosen because of things like streaming services and YouTube. And so I, I see this 
as an attempt by the Canadian government to regain that stranglehold that they used to have on media. And I see that as an incredibly dangerous thing. And I actually see this as straight up authoritarian. And I believe that the Canadian government has becoming more and more authoritarian as time has gone on, especially throughout the pandemic. I was one of the people who actually attended the uh, Freedom Convoy, the Trucker Convoy, and I had a bunch of people laugh at me, call me a bunch of stupid names, call me an idiot, call me a racist, call me uneducated, and all this other stuff. But the reason why I went was because the Canadian government for the, va for the past like two or three years has been holding on to a ton of power that they do not want to let go. And this is something that I have believed for a long time. That, uh, And it's why I don't like governments. A lot of people like to place their faith in the government and put trust in the government. But any entity that is powerful enough to give you anything you could possibly want is also powerful enough to take it away. And they can take it away without really a whole lot of reason. Uh, another good example is everybody likes to praise the Canadian healthcare system, but back when the pandemic was at its peak and hospitals were filling up, they were actually turning people away. You had to actually go and apply to go into a hospital. Uh, there was a buddy of mine who had a cancer scare and he applied twice uh, to try and get himself checked out and they rejected him both times. And I was freaking scared at that time. Turns out everything was fine. It wasn't uh, what he thought it was. It was something that was benign. He's already had the surgery. He's perfectly recovered. But if that was something more serious, that could have been, that could have ended very differently. And uh, there was somebody I dated uh, two years ago who they, like the doctors thought that she may have had a brain tumor and it took her two months to get a brain scan. And it actually probably took her more than two months because she was aware of the fact that she may have had a tumor when I met her, so who knows how long that she was actually waiting. This is just an example of the government uh, trying to provide a service when in reality it takes it away when it's beneficial. Another one was, there was a, in a small town close to me in my province, they completely shut down a hospital to relocate doctors into care homes because of the fact that uh, too many old people were dying. But it's like, oh my god, we are in the middle of the pandemic and you are shutting down a hospital? What? And uh, so yeah, I went to, and, and even if we go back to the whole trucker convoy thing, Trudeau invoked the Emergencies Act for the first time in Canadian history uh, that I believe wasn't in wartime. Again, I didn't really brush up on my facts before filming this video. So if I am wrong or if there's something that I, like a small detail that I missed, feel free to correct me in the comments. But it's just an example of the fact that the Canadian government is trying to hold on to these powers as much as possible, and this is a very dangerous one. Hell, even throughout the trucker convoy, despite the fact that it was incredibly peaceful, for the most part, again, I do recognize that there was, you know, some bad stuff that happened. However, again, when you have that many people, it's just kind of inevitable. It's just important to denounce those things. Despite the fact that they were majoritarily peaceful, uh, Trudeau started freezing the bank accounts of people that were that just gave money to support the convoy. They weren't even there. They weren't doing anything. They just simply donated. That, to me, is authoritarian. And, like, a lot of people... I remember back in 2016 when people said that, like, the U.S. was becoming a dictatorship when Trump got elected and people were up in arms about the, um... It was the internet thing, the uh, net neutrality thing. I think we should be just as up in arms about this because here, the government can literally control what information reaches the population, and that is an incredibly dangerous thing. Let alone the livelihoods of the YouTubers you love and the content you like to enjoy. This is a danger to the population and the, uh, of the people in Canada because uh, with this bill... The Canada can just say, oh, uh, you said something we don't like, your video is not going to be seen by anybody. And so to all the leftists in my audience, now I don't know how many there actually are because I do tend to be pretty beast, but like to all the people who are left leaning in my audience and for when Trump was elected were worried about things like patriotism and nationalism, this is a legit example of nationalism, of potentially extremist nationalism because we are going to suppress content that isn't Canadian enough uh, in order to push our 
media to be more patriotic? Oh, who decides what's Canadian enough? Why, the Canadian government, of course. Can't you see how this is a means for the government to suppress, like, anything that disagrees with them? So, like, if you are worried about, you know, democracy and liberty in the free world, this is definitely something that needs to be considered at the very least. One of the uh, main determining factors for me that it are pivotal to a free country, a true free country, is the ability to criticize the government. But with this, they can start slowly suppressing the opinions of those that disagree with them, manipulating information, and then start making decisions however they want because those that actually want to voice their objections can't. Right now in the free market that is YouTube, if you have an opinion, you can say it and hopefully get people to rally behind you and, and get your opinion broadcasted out there. But with this bill, it will make it incredibly difficult. And in true authoritarian regimes, the ability to speak freely is one of the first things to go. Actually, it's comedy. Humor is usually the first thing to go when it comes to authoritarian regimes. But in context here, it's just the ability to speak out in general. Let's Let's talk about other authoritarian regimes right now. China. I've been to China twice, and China is an incredibly safe place to be if you're a tourist. If you live there, it is fucking dangerous. Uh, you are constantly under surveillance. My father used to go to China a lot. We would go there and buy a bunch of stuff because, again, like you get the exact same type of stuff for way cheaper. But uh, and it was, and it's just a great place to visit if you're a tourist again. But one of the buddies that my father would travel with, right? He was sending an email back to his family one time, and he wrote "God bless" in the email, and it would not go through. It wouldn't send. So he was like, "Hold on, let me try something." He wrote "Dog bless," and it sent. And it's like. That's the level of control that the government has over its citizens. That's the amount of control that the government watches its citizens. And honestly speaking, I would not be surprised if the Canadian government, and really any government at all, uh, is has that level of supervision on its population. But at the very least, for now, we are still allowed to voice those concerns. You cannot speak out against the government in communist China. However, here, at the very least, for the time being, you can speak out. I mean, look what happened with the Freedom Convoy, where people for, got their bank accounts frozen for speaking out. Not even speaking out, for supporting those that were speaking out. It's, it's a scary thing. And yes, this is a bit of a slippery slope fallacy, but I do think that it is important to notice the stepping stones to an authoritarian regime before they happen, and to recognize that no government is purely good or, or is... Uh, absolved of the possibility of turning corrupt, saying it will never happen here is exactly how it happens here. We need to be, as a population and as members of the free world, as a society in the free world, need to be alert of when those in power are working more in their best interests than in ours. It is the duty of the population to keep the government in check. It's it's both it's it's vice versa. The government leads the population, however, the population also keeps an eye on the government to make sure that the decisions made are in the best interest of the population. Because when you have that much power, it is very, very easy to just throw away the thoughts of the people and start acting on your own self-interests. What's the famous quote? Power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, absolutely. And I do believe that we are seeing power corrupt here. So, I will link videos that talk more about the creator side of uh, this bill and how that could negatively affect the content creators uh, that you know and love, such as Greg Doucette, More Plates, More Dates, Johnny Shreve, and, and a myriad of others in my description. I will also link the ways that you can uh, send letters to your local um, politicians that are against this and can hopefully stop this bill from getting through and help preserve freedom of speech and uh, essentially the free market of information that is YouTube, the freedom to say what you want without fear of being shot down or suppressed. Because yes, yeah, sure, there's no legal consequences yet, but Again, who knows when those could come, and I genuinely am worried that this is a stepping stone to a more restrictive 
government in a more authoritarian regime, especially with, you know, everything that we've seen up to date. So please, if you are Canadian or you support can Canadian YouTubers, including myself, check out those links and send them out to uh, your local politicians saying, please stop this bill from getting through. If you are not Canadian, I, I'm pretty sure Greg or Derek or somebody said that you could probably submit one anyway. Just put in a random area code for some province and just give as much push back against this as humanly possible. We want this to stop. But I'm pretty sure that's really all I have to say for this situation. So I would just like to thank all of my Patreon supporters. Uh, again, they your support means a lot to me. And um, yeah, that's really all I have to say. If you want to support me or become a patron or do whatever, all links will be in the description. Thank you very much to Skybox Designs, who may or may not be editing this one. I am not sure yet, but if he is, you will see him up on screen now. And until the next one, remember, only the strong subscribe. I am not dead yet, although I might be by the end of this bill if it passes. But as long as you're not dead either, there's always a tomorrow waiting for you.